2023. For this video, I'll be going over some rotoscope transitions and some workflow improvements if you're using Runway ML to actually rotoscope out your subject. Now, those of you who are using a free version of Venture Resolve and perhaps you're using Runway ML, like I did in this video here, I had a couple people ask me questions on how to actually apply the effects to in, from any of my videos to that particular footage. Now, it all applies the same. I think the part that's getting confusing is the node layout. If you use the method in that previous video, it leaves you with multiple different nodes. You actually can compile those together into a group or you can just render the effect out and I'll show you right now. I believe it's this part here that made those who ask that question confused because you have these different nodes, whereas in my other videos, you only have the one main subject node. So if you actually highlight this and hit Control G, it'll turn this to a group node, officially making it one node. So if you want to do something like the clone effect, you can copy it by hitting Control C, click somewhere in empty space, hit Control V. You can take the output and connect it and make a merge node. And then of course you can use a transform node to make sure it's connected. You can transform node to actually correct the clone effect. So you can animate with the transform node and some, pretty much you apply the effects in any of my videos the same way. Alternatively, if you go back to the edit page, what I usually do in my workflow and what I recommend is just to render the clip in place. Just right click, go to render in place. You'll change from DN HD to DN HR. If you start your clip in log and you plan on color grading at the end, I would set it either for 12 bit or 10 bit, depending on your footage. Either one of these will do with the 444 on the end of it, 10 or 12. Or alternatively, you can just hit HQ if it's something like this here where it's already a render out clip. It's a YouTube video. I just go down to D DN HR HQ. And basically just hit render, select your folder to place it in. At that point, the clip would be rendered out. You don't have to worry about the Delta key or trying to mask out your clip because it's a little bit more taxing on the computer. And then you just go through. If you go into Fusion, you still have just the media one. You can apply the effects like normal. And this here is just a quick tip for anyone using DaVinci Resolve Studio and you're using the Magic Mask. I find this to be a quick little workflow tip. My little workflow tip for that is take your media one, your main subject, hit either hit one on the keyboard, hit this little indicator here, or you can just drag it up to the, the first viewer. And then on the Magic Mask, you're gonna do the same thing for the second viewer. Now, as you can see here on the Magic Mask node, it's actually masking out your subject, meaning you can't see anything. But if you just go over to the first viewer and begin to select from there, you can actually see what it is that you're selecting. Now, I sent this video by a subscriber, shout out to them, and I'll put a link for the original video in the description if you wanna check out the original video. Now, there's a series of transitions that happen right here in this little clip, and we're gonna to try to replicate those today. All right, so I got my two clips here. I'm gonna actually hold Alt on this second clip, drag it up. I'm gonna highlight it and hit Control D. I'm gonna turn it to one second, hit Change. And then I'm gonna actually move my playhead to the back of that one second clip. I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna move the back end of that upward and then move my top clip over the previous clip. This one here, I'm actually turning into a new Fusion clip. I'm gonna take it into Fusion and I'm gonna mask it out using the Magic Mask. Once you get the subject masked out, you just want to add a transform node in the inspector tab. You're going to go to the last frame, which is going to be 23 for here. And you're going to activate the keyframe. You're going to go back to the first frame. And on the Y axis, just going to move the subject down. And we're going to the spline editor, select the transform. We'll move this up. Zoom to fit. Down here, we're going to actually hit select all. On right click. Ease, you're gonna select cubic out. Make sure you go into your settings as well and activate the motion blur. Now for the next part of the effect, we need to duplicate our clip so we can rotoscope out the subject. For this, I actually use runway ML. So now I have my green screen, but for this, since I need the background, I'm gonna hold alt and move this up and actually make another duplicate of the background layer. I'm gonna take these two, highlight them, right click, new fusion clip and take them into fusion. Now, once I've made any tweaks and adjustments, I take the output of the Delta here and connect it to the merge node. I'm gonna select the merge node and hit Control T. Now, for this particular effect, there's nothing else that needs to be done here, but as I stated earlier, you can highlight these and hit Control G to turn into a single node and to apply any other effects. Now, back on the edit page, we basically need to animate the background. So I'm gonna select this, right click, and turn into a new fusion clip, hit right click, and open in Fusion. For this effect, we only need to animate by one second, so I'm going to frame 24. 
I'm gonna grab, make sure my medium one's highlighted, grab a transform node, and then inspect the tab on the size. I'm gonna activate the keyframe. Then we go to frame six and increase the size a little bit. From there, I'm gonna go to frame 12, bring it back to normal. I'm gonna go to frame 20, increase the size a little bit again, and then it just animate back to the normal state. So give it a little bit of a screen pump, not much. Now when you rotate the angles, you're gonna go back to frame 24 under angle and inspector tab. Go ahead and set the keyframe. We're gonna go back to frame six, which is the same frame we use when we set the keyframes for the size. And just gonna do a slight rotation. And go back to frame 12. Rotate again, go to frame 20. Do another slight rotation back the other way, and it will reset back to this default state at frame 24. On the frame zero, the first frame, you actually wanna go back here on angle. At frame zero, you wanna go here under angle and hit this little icon here to reset it to default, and then it will rotate and pump. Make sure you go into the settings and turn on motion blur. Now for this next step, we're gonna hold alt, drag it up and make a duplicate of our clip. From there, we're actually gonna rotoscope out the subject and then make another duplicate. So now using the magic mask, I have the magic mask in the second viewer, media one in the first viewer, just gonna go through here and draw a line throughout the subject. Now it's mask out, I'm gonna track back and forward. Now I did not turn this clip into a new fusion clip, so that's why you see these little extra timeline indicators on the side here. But this is the actual clip here within the yellow markers. Now that my subject is masked out, I'm actually gonna right click and render in place. Then I'm gonna hold Alt, select, make a duplicate of it. Click on it and then hit Control D. I'm gonna turn it to one second. Then we go through here and move the playhead. Put the background back on. And I'm gonna split the clip for these. I'm gonna delete these two. I'm gonna take the top layer, move it over to my previous clip, and then just move these in to close in the gap. Now we're gonna take this top clip, take it into Fusion. I'm gonna grab a transform node. I'm going to go to the last frame of the clip. Once again, my last frame is actually indicated by this yellow bar here. So I'm going to click on frame 23. In the inspector tab on the center, I activate the keyframe, go back to frame zero. I'm just going to move my subject on the X axis. Actually, I'm going to hold control first, zoom out. I'm moving to the point where you see the green indicator, push the frame. As always, activate your spline editor. I'm going to zoom to fit so we can see. Select all. Right click, ease in, well, ease and then cubic out. And back on the edit page. Ooh, look how smooth that boy slide in. Next step. Now for the next part, we're gonna select the bottom clip. I'm just gonna right click, turn into a new fusion clip. Then I'm gonna right click, turn it to fusion. With the media one selected, we're gonna grab a transform node. And the inspector tab where it says edges, change it from canvas to wrap. And then we're gonna go midway through our clip, so for me, it'd be around about frame 25. I'm gonna go back to inspect this app and set the keyframe on the center. Go back to the first frame. I like center on the X axis, and we're just gonna move it over to roughly about, to the number hits about seven. Then we're gonna go to the settings, activate motion blur, crank it up, and that's gonna give our blur a background. We're just gonna stop at 24, and then we'll animate the rest. Now back on the edit page, and for the next part, we're going to select the subject here, hold Alt, drag it up, make another copy. Then we're going to select the middle copy, right click, open in Fusion, the media one selected, grab a transform node. We're going to go to the Inspector tab, change it to Wrap. We're going to go to the last frame of my clip, which for my clip is 68. Set a keyframe on the center. Then the background effect actually stops at frame 25. We're going to go here and start at frame 26. And we're just going to animate this to the left. Once again, get to about seven or eight or so. We can go into settings, turn on motion blur, crank that up. Now the actual effect is only animating to one side. So to do that, we're actually gonna select the transform node, grab a rectangle mask, gonna open it up. And when you're reshaping your mask, you wanna put it about midway across your subject due to the fact that this is just a mid layer. So it's not gonna mask out the top layer. So if you go back into the edit page and let it render, you'll see, you get a better visual of what I mean. So you can hear the background warps, and then you see the main subject warps. 
But since we're using the second layer, layer it's only warping to the one side, much like the original uh, original demo. Perfect. You notice in this video, I kept everything broken down to layers. I actually find it to be a lot easier to work with than taking all the footage, taking it into fusion and then trying to work out with the nodes. If you leave it stacked like I did, I find it makes it a little bit easier to work with. If you like today's video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We finished 2022 strong with over 3,000 subscribers. It's most definitely keep on pushing for 2023. I'll see you in the next video.